hey cool cats this is Mina with a new series called trails in the sky I have played some of this game and by some of it I mean what would amount to basically five ten minutes I don't I don't really consider that a lot of the game so we're just going to jump right into this uh, I did ask someone about the difficulties. Um, my friend Momo told me that the difficulty really does not um, does not add to the experience. It just adds to the grind. I really don't want to grind in this particular game. When it comes to grinding in games, I, uh, I, I if, if I like a game, I really want to grind in it. So like Persona, SMT, I'm cool with that. Anyways, cutscene time. Daddy's really late. He even got a message from the guild saying he'd be home today, too. And Cher is gone traveling around the kingdom on some kind of training. I'm so bored. Maybe I'll just practice with my staff a bit more before dinner. Hey, I'm home! Daddy! Sorry to have kept you waiting, Estelle. Did you take good care of the house while I was away? <laughs> of course I did. Did you run into any trouble, Daddy? You didn't get hurt fighting the bad monsters, did you? Nope, I'm fit as a fiddle. That reminds me, though, I brought you a present. Really? What kind of present? A new fishing pole? Sneakers? Something for my training? Maybe I raised you wrong, Estelle. Aren't little girls supposed to like clothes and jewelry? I like pretty clothes, but they just get dirty. And jewelry breaks when you go play outside with it on. Anyway, Daddy, what's with the big blanket? Is that my present? Oh, you're a sharp one. Why don't you come have a look? Blah? Well, here you are. Quite a handsome boy, don't you think? Why is my present a boy? Don't make such a fuss or you'll wake him up. Wake him up? You mean he's still alive? He looks kind of dead if you ask me. I've treated his wounds so he should be in stable condition. In the meantime, however, we'll need to let him rest. I'll put him to bed, so if you wouldn't mind heating a kettle of water on the stove, I'd appreciate it. Okay. He sure sleeps soundly. He almost looks the same age as me. This is the first time I've ever seen black hair like that, too. He certainly does have a nice head of dark hair. And a pair of amber eyes to go with it. Hmm. That's nice and all, but how about you come clean and fess up? Fess up? Yeah, who is this kid anyway? And why is he hurt? Why did you bring him to our house? Is he an illegitimate child or something? Did you betray mommy? Where have you been picking up these kinds of words? No doubt from Sherzahard, I assume. Yep, that's right. For heaven's sake, that girl is going to give me... That girl is going to get me into trouble one of these days with all her nonsense. Actually, I just met this boy while I was out on business. I don't even know his name. You mean Bracer Business? Something like that. Oh, look. Huh? He's waking up. Hmm. Well, his eyes really are the color of amber. Well, where am I? So you're awake now, are you? Welcome to my humble home. You'll be safe here, so please just try to rest. What are you trying to pull? Huh? You must be out of your mind. Why? Why didn't you leave me there to die? Why? Now that's a question I don't know how to answer. Does things just worked out that way work for you? D don't toy with me, Cassius Bright! Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself into? Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself involved in? Hey! You sure shouting a lot for someone who's supposed to be hurt. Running your mouth 
like that is just going to make it take longer for your body to heal. Just who are you supposed to be? I'm Estelle. Estelle Bray. She's my daughter. Don't you remember me telling you that I have a daughter your age? Now that you mention it. Wait a minute. Don't try and change the sub... Ow! Quit yelling! All right, all right, already. But you're jumping on me like that isn't going to make me heal any faster either. I don't hear you yelling again, do I? Look, jumping on me like that is just going to make things worse. Do I hear yelling? Oh, never mind. Just forget it. As a word of advice, it would be wise not to argue with Estelle while you're in this house. Even I wouldn't stand a chance if I made her mad enough. Yeah, I could see that. By the way, aren't you forgetting something? Huh? Your name! You know, the thing that people call you? I told you mine already, so don't you think it would be unfair and impolite not to tell me yours? Um... It seems like the logical thing to do, if you ask me. Trying to hide it now would only serve to your detriment. But fine. My name is... Alright, so I did see this scene when I first recorded, and I can only assume that his last name is the reason why we faded to black before he spoke. So I assume at some point we're going to hear someone refer to some last name at some point during playing this game, and that's going to be his last name. Because they, they certainly do not tell you at any point while I was playing. I gave Estelle a really uh, high-pitched voice at, at a, as a child, but I'm probably going to just use my voice for Estelle. I might do a little more hyper version of my voice, but I, I like using a default voice to relax with. <clears throat> Ugh, it's so bright in here. Mm, I slept like a rock. Hmm, this must, hmm, that must mean it's Dad's turn to cook this morning. I wonder if that means Joshua's still in bed. Ah, guess that's a no. Well, I guess I'd better get myself ready then, too. Joshua. Bravo. Good morning, Estelle. I hope I didn't wake you. Nah, I was already up when I heard you start to play. I can't believe how awake you are, though. Even the roosters still have bags under their eyes. Not that I mind, what with that siren song of yours gently lulling this beautiful woman from their slumber. What do you mean, woman? We're the same age, and I'm hardly a man. Tisk, tisk, tisk. How wrong you are, Joshua. We may be the same age, but I am clearly the woman of the house. And that makes you something like my loyal follower, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. How fortunate for you. You could at least try and sound a tiny bit sincere. It really is a nice tune, though. Cheerful, yet somehow wistful. I like your other songs, too, of course, but this one's my favorite. Er, uh, what's it called again? The Whereabouts of Light. That's right, The Whereabouts of Light. I wish I could play the harmonica like you, Joshua. Sadly, it's a lot harder than it looks. Compared to what it takes to use a staff, I think the harmonica is much easier. It's really just a matter of concentration. You're probably right. I guess my problem is that... I guess my problem is just that if I don't do something that uses my whole body, I start to feel drowsy. Okay, playing the harmonica is fine and all, but how about getting some exercise too? All your hobbies are sitting around kind of stuff, like reading and music. No girl is going to be impressed with just that. Well, 
excuse me for being so unpopular with the ladies. Although, I feel like I should be the one lecturing you about your hobbies. I mean, what kind of boy wants a girl who loves fishing, collecting bugs, and has a fetish for sports shoes? Er, that's enough talk about hobbies for now. And for your information, I graduated from bug collecting a long time ago. Really, I'll believe that when I stop finding beetles in the hallway. Hey, Estelle? Joshua? Morning, Dad! Good morning, Dad. Is breakfast ready? I'm... It's ready and waiting. Why don't the both of you hurry on down before it gets cold? Okay! I'm on my way. Thanks for the grub, Dad! Boy, am I stuffed! Are you eating or inhaling, Estelle? <laughs> like people say, kids who eat and sleep a lot grow a lot. Well, make sure you get enough to eat. Don't forget to pour that energy of yours into work, too. That reminds me, you two are finishing up your training at the Guild today, aren't you? That's right. It'll be a review of everything we've learned up to this point. And once we're finished, we'll be bracers just like you, Dad. That means I'm not going to let you treat me like a kid anymore, either. You still lack understanding, Estelle. You can only become a junior bracer in the beginning, or in other words, a trainee. If you want to be treated like an adult, then you should work extra hard in your training to become a full-fledged bracer. Well, I'm not afraid of a little hard work. Just you watch and see what I'm capable of, Dad. I'll be so successful that it won't be long before I pass you, too. That's the spirit. Let's see what you're made of then, shall we? So let's start a rivalry here, you two. And Estelle, keep your focus on the task at hand. We have a test later on today, remember? Huh? Wait, what test? Please tell me that you didn't forget about the test, Estelle. You know, the one that checks whether or not we've mastered the skills we've been learning and training. Don't you remember Cher saying that if we failed, we'd be stuck with a ton of extra homework? Crap, totally forgot. Now that you mention it, I guess I kind of remember her saying something like that. Don't sweat it, I'm sure we'll manage somehow or other. I honestly don't know how you survived this long, Estelle. Your brain is like a sieve. Papa is sad. How can any child of mine end up with such a careless, over-optimistic personality? Ha! Huh. You're the one that raised me, so I definitely got it from you. I swear, the two of you act so much alike, but whatever. We should probably head on over to the guild soon, Estelle. Cher is going to be waiting there for us. Sounds like a plan. You know how crazy scary she gets when someone keeps her waiting. Oh, before I forget, it's my turn to cook dinner tonight. Is there anything in particular you'd like to eat, Dad? Any requests? Hmm, something I'd like to eat, huh? Hmm. How about ruined style scalloped fish and balsamic vinegar sauce? What's that? I think that's a little more than Estelle's cooking skills can handle. Or our stomachs. You're right, I just wanted to see what kind of reaction I could get. I'll just have the usual fried fish and omelet. No need for anything fancy, but do try to make something edible. How rude! But I can't actually say he's wrong. Actually, I do have one favor to ask before you head out. I'd like you to pick me up a copy of the Liberal News from the General Goods Store. They're supposed to be getting the latest edition in today. Got it. One copy of the Liberal News from the General Goods Store. Received 500 Mira. If there's any money left over, you can have it as your allowance. However, that means no wasteful spending. Alright, thanks, Dad. Okay, we're heading out now. See you later, Dad. Work hard and give Sherzard my regards. Alright, so one thing that I did do, and oh, you know what? I could, can talk more to my father. By the way, Dad, is it going to be alright if you stay at home like this instead of going to the guild today? You haven't been there for a couple of days now. Unfortunately, I have a lot of paperwork to sort out. But don't you worry, I'm carrying a big enough workload that the guild's not likely going to fire me anytime soon. That's not exactly the most convincing thing I've heard come out of your mouth. How about yourself? Shouldn't you be getting over to the guild? Sherzard is waiting, right? So, 
I noticed that a lot of the NPCs when I first played this game have a lot of dialogue, and I also noticed that there's not a lot of um, hidden stuff. Like I, I, I didn't find like any secrets ar around the the home at least. So there's not like any chests or anything. I think the only in yeah, this log thing is the only interactable thing out here. There's a standing log for staff pra practice, and you can go to sleep in your bed. Or Joshua's bed, I assume. Um, but yeah, there's nothing, nothing to examine. Um, so I do finish what I would consider the first day of this game, and that is about as far as I've ever been in this game. So I, I, I wouldn't say that I've played much of it at all. City of Roland. It looks like we made good time. Not too early or too late either. We just barely graduated from Sunday school. Never dreamed we'd have to study so hard to become bracers. Well, you're in luck. Today is our last day of training. Truth be told, though, you're the one who signed up to be a bracer in the first place, so I don't know why you'd expect to get away with any less effort. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. All right, then. Let's get to it and make it through this last hazing from Shara. You look ready to me. Let's go meet with Shara at the Bracer Guild over there, then. So, um, I don't know my way around this town, and I've actually never been inside some of these, some of these places, but, uh, right here is the general goods store where you're supposed to get the, um, newspaper, but I don't think they, he'll give it to you now. Good morning, Mr. Renon! Hello there, Estelle and Joshua. You're up rather early today. Did you come to buy a new pair of shoes? Now that you mention it, are there any new ones in stock? You know, like the newest Stregas? Unbelievable. You actually already forgotten why we came here to begin with. I'm not here to shop. We're supposed to be buying a copy of the liberal news for Dad, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> You've always been a big collector of those shoes, haven't you, Estelle? I'm afraid the new Stregas aren't out yet. If you're after the latest issue of the Liberal News, though, I should have them in around noon. Noon, huh? That's right in the middle of our training at the Guildhouse. We'll stop by again after our training is over. Sure, I'll be waiting for you! Yeah. So we can get that after we do, um, this trip here. <clears throat> when it comes to, like, minor NPCs, I might not take the time to voice them. Like this. I was just on my way over to the forest of Miswall to the south of here for work. There was a merchant from Bose who came here to buy lumber. I need to get enough ready for the order I received. Are. Good morning, Estelle. Good morning, Joshua. Morning, Ina. Good morning. Is Shara here already? Yes, she's waiting for you upstairs. Once you finish today's training, you'll finally be recognized as members of the Bracer Guild. Good luck to the both of you. Thanks. We'll do our best. The star and the hanged man, the hermit and the magician, and last of all, inversion through the wheel of fortune. Hmm, this is a difficult combination. How should I interpret this? Good morning, Shara! Well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua, this is a rare occasion for the both of you to show up early. Since it's my last day of training, I figured, why not? I'm ready to get the show on the road and become a bracer myself. I'll give you credit for your enthusiasm, but I'm going to work you hard today to make... But I'm going to work you hard today in every way I can think of to make sure that high-spirited attitude of yours holds up. I hope you're ready. I can feel that enthusiasm dropping already. 
quiet, you. Every time I teach you something, you somehow manage to forget it. This training is my way of trying to keep some of that information in your head instead of letting it dribble out of your ears like it usually does. Waha! <laughs> Joshua, Shara's picking on me! Don't worry, Shara. While well, Estelle may hate studying and rarely ever does her homework, acts rashly, is overly naive, and has a tendency to stick her nose into everything, her instincts are sharp, so I'm sure she'll pick up on how to use an orbament with some practice. Eventually. Probably. I guess there's not much I can do now except hope for the best. Hold on a second, Joshua. Somehow I get the feeling that you weren't standing up for me. Well, that's odd. I'm positive I described all your best traits accurately. Whatever. By the way, Shara, what were you trying to predict with your tarot cards? Your face was really intent. Oh, this? I was just trying to get a vague reading on what might happen in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have been in the right mindset to interpret the cards correctly. You couldn't read the cards? Well, that's surprising to hear. Actually, the more profound the meaning of the cards, the more difficult they become to interpret. But that's not important now. I think it's time we start your final training. I'll give you a brief rundown of all the information we've covered in your previous training. This is the minimal level of knowledge that bracers should have in order to function effectively. And Estelle, make sure you pay especially close attention to what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Alright. I am going to breeze through this as fast as I can. <laughs> so I'm not going to do her voice. Orbiments are mechanical devices which operate by using what is known as orbital energy. A variety of effects can be produced depending on their structure and the type of quartz or process septium installed. Although it's only been about 50 years since their invention, these devices play an integral role in all facets of life, from lights, heaters, to other everyday products, to weapons, magic, and even airships. In connection, this technological reform is commonly known as the orbital revolution. Bracers are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, finding lost items, and escorting people and goods. The Bracer Guild, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each region. The Kingdom of Liberal, in which we live, sits on the western half of the Zemurian continent and abounds with nature and deep-rooted traditions. Liberal is proud to be one of the leading producers of septium on the continent and is known for its high level of technology used to develop orbments. Orbment technology has also been a key pillar of support for Liberal in protecting its independence as it has contended with neighboring nations. Ten years ago, when Liberal was invaded by the Erebonian Empire, it was the use of orbital-powered airships that saved the kingdom from defeat. Consequently, even now, our relationship with the Empire is somewhat sensitive, but thanks to the Queen's political finesse, Liberal enjoys peace. Let's see, since we've got a mountain of stuff to do today, I'll let you off the hook this time with a condensed review. I'm going to speed things up now and move on to practical portion of your training. Uh, Shara? How is today's practical training any different from the training we've done before? Since it's practical, that means you will be experiencing things firsthand. Therefore, I'm going to have the both of you run through everything as if it were a real bracer job. So what you're saying is, there won't be any studying at a desk involved? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. This time you'll have to go out and make a physical effort to accomplish your task. I'll make sure to have you work up a sweat, so I hope you're ready. Yes! This is seriously what the doctor ordered! I didn't know I was going... I didn't know what I was going to do if I had to sit another day with my tush parked at a desk. I guess I got all worried for nothing. Well, suddenly you're all bright and cheerful, Estelle. Let's hope that smile on your face lasts till the end of today's training. Okay, let's get cracking on your first objective, shall we? Let's have at it! Your first objective will be to confirm the details of the job of which you will be performing. But before that, there is something that we need to give the both of you. 
I know. Are they ready? Yes, they are. All right, you two. Go get one for each of yourselves. These are very important, so make sure not to lose them. Received a bracer notebook. Bracer notebooks serve as the official way to record the status of your current jobs. Also, anything you may hear or anything you may find and where. These kinds of trivial things can often become clues. No matter how insignificant something may seem, always write it down. Understood. Crap, this sounds like it's going to be a pain. Oh? Please tell me it was my ears playing tricks on me, because I swear I only got one response. Ah, uh, I'm sure there were two. Keeping an accurate account of events is an important duty for all bracers. So get with the program and stop trying to make this out to be more than it really is, Estelle. Okay, okay, I got it. Make sure you do. Alright then, let's begin. Look over by the door. You can see that there's a bulletin board standing there. First, I want you to go and check the job description posted there. When the bulletin board is approached, an exclamation mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display the job list. By selecting the job names on the list, you can view their details. Training Retrieval. Client Sherzard. Play is 500 Mira. Details. Direct request. This training will involve searching the sewers beneath Roland and bringing back the contents of a chest. See Sherzard for details. Details of the job confirmed on the bulletin board and other important events will automatically be recorded in the Bracer Notebook. The Bracer Notebook can easily be found by clicking on the Books tab of the Items menu. It can also be accessed by configuring a Bracer Book shortcut button on the Configuration menu. Very good. It looks like you were able to see what was posted without any trouble. Checking the bulletin board is one of the most basic functions a Bracer performs on their job. Checking regularly to see whether or not there are any urgent tasks which need immediate attention is also an important duty for bracers. Man, all this talk about duty is starting to cramp my style. Sure, there are a lot of rules to follow, but there's an equal level of responsibility in the jobs themselves. I think being a bracer calls for much more than someone with a half-hearted attitude. Um, I guess you're right. I'll just have to be more motivated. Is that so? Had a change of heart, have you? You betcha! Well, before all that motivation sneaks off somewhere, let's get to work on your next task. What will we be doing this time? We'll be heading across the street to Mr. Melder's Orbal Factory and learning about how to use its services. He has graciously taken the time out of his work schedule to explain things, so make sure to be on your best behavior. Okay! Here is where you'll learn about how to use an Orbal Factory's services, at a normal factory, you can modify your ornaments and synthesize support cords in order to use orbital arts. Arts have a wide range of effects, and it's, if mastered, can be extremely helpful. The bracer business has been. The bracer business is a pretty risky occupation, so the guild has a long-standing relationship with these orbital factories. Anyway, this is about as much as I can explain. I'll leave the technical details to the expert. So, Mr. Melders, if you wouldn't mind taking over from here. No problem. Leave everything to me. So, what is it that you would like to know about? Alright, breezing through this again. Orbiments are mechanical devices which exhibit an array of effects through the installation of various types of quartz. By definition, this means that the lights, airship engines, and so on are all types of orbiments. However, the ones we will be discussing today are battle orbiments, which enhance the user's physical abilities and make it possible to use magic. Since each orbiment is adjusted to match the owner's personal aptitude, the structures for these devices also differ for each owner. Simply put, the shape in the fit... Simply put, the shape of the fixed elemental slots and lines which connect them vary. At any rate, that's the layman's explanation. In order to install quartz, you must first have an open slot. By default, the central slot is open, but the other slots must be opened at an orbital factory like this. It'll take a fair amount of Sepheth, too. EP, which is needed for magic, will also see a max increase according to the number of open slots. I recommend opening them all as soon as possible. So, what is it that you want to know about? Orbital arts. Simply put, orbital arts are magic which 
Simply put, herbal arts are magic which can be discharged exclusively through the use of battle orbaments. In other words, a number of peculiar effects can be produced by using the orbital energy stored within these mechanical devices. Since orbital arts can be a mouthful, they are almost universally referred to as arts. Probably ought to have called that from the get-go. There are several types of arts, but in order to be able to use that, their corresponding quartz must be first be synthesized at an orbital factory. Orbaments are also set up so that once a particular quartz is installed into a slot, the owner will be able to use those arts. The types of arts one can use also changes depending on the elemental value and the combination of installed quartz. Basically, if you want to use water arts, all you have to do is install quartz with a water element value. In reality, orbaments are much more complex than what I've described, but I think this information should suffice for now. Quartz are circuits made from sepith. Quartz have a vast number of effects and raise the owner's abilities while simultaneously making it possible for them to use arts. However, you will not be able to harness any of these effects until quartz has been installed into a slot. There are also fixed slots in which only certain types of elemental quartz can be installed. This being the case, when you synthesize a new quartz, be sure to check your orbament and decide which, where you will be installing it ahead of time. Okay, blah 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 blah, Sepith. Sepith are fragments of septium which are dropped by monsters. They are divided into seven types, earth, water, fire, wind, time, space, and mirage. Sepith can be exchanged for mirror almost anywhere, but at an orbital factory, it can be used to synthesize quartz to open orbament slots, which will install this <laughs> at an orbital factory. It can be used to synthesize quartz and to open orbament slots in which to install the synthesized quartz. All right. That was really wordy, and I'm sure none of it sunk in, because it didn't sink in when I first played. It looks like Mr. Melders has answered all of your questions. If there's nothing else, then let's try to have both of you use the services here. For that, you're going to need some sepith. Alright, so we received some sepith. With that amount, you two should be able to synthesize a few quartz. Now I want you to begin by first making an elemental quartz that will work with each of your particular orbaments. In your case, Estelle, any elemental quartz is okay, but for you, Joshua, it has to be a time elemental quartz. Normally at a shop, you would be able to exchange Sepith for Mira, but for this training, you will not be able to use this service. All right. Upon approaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display a list of options. Select modify or trade to use the orbital factory services. Okay. So. Let's modify. Wait, we gotta make a quartz. So, let's make action. And I've done this, like I said, once. And I remembered that I needed to make a blue one. Because, um... Oh god, I don't remember the controls. <laughs> because I, I remember that you have to actually a, equip a healing one. And that is water, so... Yeah, so we had to make a time and water one. Oh, so you finished installing your quartz, have you? Since you both have recovery arts and... Since you both have recovery and attack arts set up, it appears that you don't need any more instruction from me about how to do this task. If you balance your arts out between each other like you've done here, it should make dealing with monsters much easier. Additionally, your bracer notebooks contain information about which quartz allow you to use which arts. If you'd like to use more powerful arts, check out the arts and quartz charts on in your... If you'd like to use more powerful arts, check out the arts and quartz charts in your bracer notebooks and find something that works for you. Alright, our training here is almost finished. Last of all, I'm going to have one of you open a new slot in your orbaments. The more slots you have available to you, the broader range of choices you'll have. Since EP, which is consumed by using arts, can have its max value increased by opening up slots, it'd be a good idea to open them all early on. Now I want you to use the sepith and open a slot on each of your orbaments. Go ahead and decide which slots you're going to open. I believe you can only actually open up one person slots. So, because it requires... 30 and you you just don't have enough to like open them all so I'm gonna go ahead and open that one so if you look at if you look at um Joshua he's got like certain slots that can only have time and then like the rest of them are all openable I don't know how many characters you can get in this game but I'm guessing that like Estelle is like your your true um, 
what's the word I'm looking for here? Your jack of all trades character? I don't know for sure, but that's my assumption. I see you've managed to open one of your ornament slots, Estelle. Since your central slot is not limited to a particular elemental, you are free to install any type of quartz you like. This concludes your training here at the Orbo Factory. Now it's time to move on what you've all been waiting for, the qualification test. Pardon? D did you just say test? You can't honestly tell me that you forgot about the test again, can you? Didn't I remind you this morning? Ahahaha. <laughs> Now that you mention it, I vaguely remember some sort of talk along those lines at the breakfast table. Sometimes I fear for the future of the Bracer Guild and humanity. Oh well, no sense in worrying about that now. Let's head over to the testing area. You mean like now? I don't know if I'm ready for... How about a little less yapping and a little more walking? Joshua, help me! Mr. Melder, Freddy, thank you for all your help. Don't mention it, and good luck on that test of yours. We'll be rooting for you. I'm gonna remember that you left me high and dry like this, Joshua! All of your training has finally come down to this. Your qualification test will begin here. I expect to see both of you use what you've learned up to this point. Understood. What's wrong, Estelle? Um, Shara? What now? I was kind of wondering, but is there not going to be a paper test or something? Did Cassius drop you on your head as a child or something? You just read what it said on the bulletin board not that long ago, right? Yeah, and? And I even made you jot down what you read in your bracer notebooks. Unless you forgot that, too. I'm pretty sure the job listing mentioned searching for and retrieving an item from the sewers. Ringing any bells yet? What a relief! Oh, Divine Ios, I give thanks to thee for thy infinite grace in bestowing upon us such wonderful gifts as sewers. So what you're really saying is that you thought this was a paper test. No wonder you were acting all crazy back at the Orville factory. Ah, I can already feel the nostalgia. All those horrible days stuck in a classroom are starting to feel like grand memories indeed. I'm really starting to wonder if we'll be able to graduate at all. What's wrong with you? Why do you have to go and say something like that when I'm trying to reminisce about positive things? Alright, that's enough jabbering, you two. This is supposed to be a test, so how about the both of you try to at least a look little... This is supposed to be a test, so how about the both of you try to look at least a little anxious? Just so you know, though, if you do happen to flunk the test, you don't even want to imagine the kind of homework I have in store for the both of you. Hehehe, <laughs> we'll be fine. Just tell us what you want us to do and let us loose. Well, if you're so confident, then how about proving that you're not just blowing hot air with the results of your test? Anyway, as you both saw on the bulletin board, this test will be a search conducted in Volant sewers. Your objective is to retrieve the contents of a test which has been placed somewhere within that area. The layout of the sewers is extremely simple, so you don't need to worry about getting lost either. However, there are real li However, there are real living breathing monsters down there, so if you get careless and let down your guard, you will be sorry. Also, let me give you this before I forget. Received tier bomb times three, received a monster guide. What's this book for? It's called a monster guide, and it's used to record information about monsters and other opponents you meet. Wherever you figure out an enemy's attributes, you should make an immediate note of it in here. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. He who controls the flow of information controls the tide of battle, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. You've got a really good head on your shoulders, Joshua. That's some pretty useful advice. Thanks for the tip, Shara. We'll put it to good use. Alrighty then, let's get pumped and knocked out this test. Let's. Don't forget, though, this is an exam. We should at least treat it as such. Do do do. Wait a minute, Estelle. There appears to be a recovery point over there, so we should use it if our HP or EP becomes low. 
Orbitment charging stations are recovery points set up in dangerous areas. As a recovery point is approached, the exclamation point will appear and two choices will be displayed by pressing the OK button. By selecting the rest option, all HP and EP will be restored. Sounds like a plan to me! So, I'm sure some of you are wondering, um, like, am I going to include all the battles I do in this game? And the answer is no. I will kind of go over the tutorial battles, so that way, like, in case you want to play this game yourself, you can kind of see what the combat's like. And, of course, I'll keep boss encounters, mini boss encounters, story encounters, something, like, if it's important. But the minor enemies, probably not, unless something super interesting happens. <clears throat> Monsters at 12 o'clock. Be careful not to let them take advantage of your blind side. Got it. Monsters cannot be seen from far away. They will become visible as you approach them. The conditions at the start of the battle will change depending on how the monster is engaged. Engaging an enemy from behind is advantageous, while being attacked by an enemy from behind is disadvantageous. Alright, battle order bar indicates who attacks first. It starts from the top and moves down. Alright, we're just going to go with a regular attack. Attack! Attack an enemy. You may also use it to move if you are using it to move and click an empty location. The highlighted area indicates the distance a character can move. Selecting a target in that area will move the character to attack. When an enemy is out of range, a... I don't know what that icon is. It's, it's a bad icon. Will appear on your cursor. Selecting an out of range target will move the character as close as possible, but no attack will be performed. So... Something that I notice is like move and attack like I, I guess I guess the point of move is if you wanted to move somewhere specific but for the most part I just always use attack because it moves you where you want to go Come some more. Depending on the enemy, some physical attacks may be ineffective. Let's use arts, not physical attacks. Okay. Arts are effective on enemies that are good at avoiding physical attacks. Arts also make long-range attacks possible, but they require time to be cast. EP is consumed when arts are used. EP can be recovered by at resting at inns, hotels, or by using charge stations or other items such as an EP charge. Arts are effective against- yeah, we- Arts. Arts are effective against foes which are difficult to hit with a weapon, or those on which physical attacks have little effect. It takes time before arts can be cast. Also, EP is consumed when arts are cast. All arts have an element. Determine what element is most effective against your foe and use it. So, I'm going to show you some arts. We're just going to use uh, Aqua Bleed here for that one. And we will use... Soul Blur on that one. And that should do it for these two. Let's try using crafts this time around. Since crafts having since crafts have other effects besides just dealing out damage, they're worth a shot. Roger that! Crafts have lane crafts have range limits but can be utilized instantly. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. Crafts. Crafts are character specific skills which not only deal out damage but also have a broad range of effects. Using crafts consumes CP. CP is gradually gained by dealing out or receiving damage in battle. So. Basically, we can pump up the party with morale. And we can do dual strike, which should finish off this enemy. There and what? Oh, you lucky monster! <laughs> I 
And there's a treasure chest down this way. Oh, what a surprise! Another creepy thing. I wish there was an easier way to take care of them. One below using an S-craft or an S-break should do the trick for just about any enemy. The catch is, our CP has to be at least 100 to pull off one of these moves. These devastating attacks can only be unleashed when the CP gauge is above 100. S-breaks are actions which allow S-crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order. S-crafts, which are unleashed as S-breaks, can, can be changed by going to tactics and then set S-break within the main menu. Alright. S-breaks. These are actions which allow S-crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order once the CP gauge has reached zero. S-crafts which will be used as S-breaks can be changed by going to tactics and then set S-break within the main menu. Press the break button to unleash an S-break. An S-break cannot be unleashed under the the no-go condition. Now press the break button and try to unleash an S-break if you're using a keyboard, blah 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 blah, whatever. Oh, it's it's forcing me to use it. Alright, we'll we'll dump it on that one back there. So that's the treasure chest we're after, huh? If we make it this far, the rest of it is going to be a piece of cake. Seems like we've got a little breathing room at least. Let's pay close attention to our battle order this time. There should be a number of ways to get more mileage out of our actions. During the battle, there are several bonuses which can be allotted to turns. Turn bonuses have the same effect regardless of whether they are allotted to an ally or a foe. Using S-breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. These icons indicate the bonuses allotted to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. Heal HP, set this up, etc. Indicate the effects of each icon. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and use... Man, I feel like we need to... We need to get rid of um, those annoying things. All right. I don't feel like walking all the way over there, so I'm just gonna sever him. And now you guys get to see what the sever attack looks like. That's weird. There's a couple of boxes inside the treasure chest. The fact that there's not just one, but two is kind of interesting too. wonder what's inside. Remember Estelle, our mission is to search and retrieve only. I'm pretty sure looking inside those boxes don't fall under our mission objective. You're no fun at all, Joshua. This has nothing to do with our mission. It's what I like to call good, honest curiosity. You know, we're the only ones down here. We can get away with the teensy weensy peak, right? If you feel like flunking today's test, then by all means, be my guest. Did you just say the F word? Yep, opening one of those boxes could result in an automatic fail for the both of us. If this were a real job, the contents of those boxes would belong to the client. And as long as they were nothing illegal, we would have no right to open them. I know you're right, Joshua, but I just can't help myself. If you absolutely have to know what's inside, why not ask Miss Shara when we get back? But for now, we need to focus on getting out of here. Alright, alright. Good work, you two. As a rule of our, 
As a rule of training, I'm going to need to confirm the items in your possession. Hand it over the small box. Yep, they're the real deal, all right. I don't see any evidence of tampering, either. That was a close one. I figured you would try and set us up like that. Congratulations to the both of you. You have successfully passed your qualification test. You didn't really think something like this simple would get... You didn't really think something that simple would be a problem for us, did you? So, uh, Shara, what's in those boxes you had us get? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out after your training is finished. That's enough chit-chat for now, so let's get back to work. You two still have some things to do. Seriously? But didn't you just say that we passed the test? You still have to learn about how to report the results of your work. I'm aware that you're both tired, but this is no time to shirk your duties. Let's get back to the guild. When is this day going to be over? Oh well, no sense in giving up when the finish line is in sight. Agreed. It seems like we're within reaching distance of our goal. Your final training is how to report to the guild. Whenever you finish a job, it is your duty to report the results of your work to the guild. Reporting how you resolve the situation and the steps you took to get there are all parts of your job as a bracer. You can report your results to the front desk in each guild branch, and as you already know by now, Ina is in charge of here at the Roland branch. In addition, this is where you'll be paid for your work. I look forward to seeing great things from the both of you. Now that we're here, why don't you both go ahead and report the results of today's training? Upon reaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display a list of options. Select Report to report to the guild. Report. Receive payment for training retrieval. Current rank is Junior Bracer 9th class. Great job, you two. It seems like you were able to complete your objective without running into any major problems. Another thing to take note of is, depending on how you handle a job, you may see an increase or decrease in the amount of pay you receive. When you report the results of your work to the guild, pay in the form of Mira isn't the only thing you will receive. You also accumulate points which are known as BP, bracer points. Bracer BP are an indication of your achievements as a bracer. When these points exceed a certain value, you will advance in rank as a bracer and be awarded with a piece of special equipment by the guild. The ranks of a junior bracer start out at 9 and go all the way up to 1. Please set your sights on making first rank and work hard. The amount of mirror and BP you receive will be The amount of mirror and BP you receive will also be recorded in your bracer notebook, so please have a look sometime later on. All that's left to do now is finalize your training. Let's head back upstairs, shall we? I'll talk to you later, Ina, and sorry about putting more work on your plate today than usual. Don't worry about it. Training new bracers is important for the future of the guild. I fully intend to work these two to the bone in any case. T to the bone? And knowing Shara, it'll involve the whip. Let me say it again. Good work, you two. You have now officially completed the entire training course. From now on, you'll be learning from your own real-world experience. Well then. Sherzard holds out two small boxes. Aren't those boxes the ones? In answer to your question, yes, these are the boxes you retrieved during today's test. You seem awfully curious to find out what's inside, Estelle. Are you saying that it's okay if we open them? That's right. Why don't the both of you have a look and see what's inside? Sweet! Alright, let's have a look. Estelle and Joshua open the boxes. Received Junior Bracer Emblem. This crest is... So does that mean we're... Ahem. Estelle Bright, Joshua Bright. Beginning this day, at 1500 hours, you are both hereby appointed as junior bracers within the Bracer Guild. From here on, you will work as members of the Bracer Guild to support the livelihood of those around you, defend peace, and uphold justice. Congratulations, you two, and welcome to the fold. Did you hear that, Joshua? We've become members of the Bracer Guild! So, I'm a bracer now, huh? I think that realization is only now just beginning to sink in. Come on, Joshua! You should be jumping for joy or running around and screaming at the top of your lungs like this! 
Look at us now, world! We did it! I was happy until you made my eardrums bleed. I hate to interrupt the celebrations, Estelle, but I need to take off now. I have some backed up work that needs my immediate attention. We understand. You have been spending a lot of extra hours working with us during this busy time for the guild. Before you head out, Shara, I just wanted to say thanks. Likewise, I appreciate all the trouble you've gone through for us, Shara. Don't mention it, training new recruits is one of the Bracer's many duties. Believe it or not, I was once in your shoes a long time ago when your father Cassius trained me. So that's why you have so much respect for my dad, huh? There's actually much more to it than that, but I'll save that conversation for another day. As for the both of you, work hard and become full-fledged bracers early on so you can help guide these new recruits who come after yourselves. And in time, I hope to see you both become respectable bracers like your father. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Um, I just don't get it. Get what? This is Sherzard, aka the Silver Streak, one of the most skilled young bracers we're talking about. So why is it that she holds Dad in such high esteem? He just seems like nothing more than a no-good middle-aged man who is always out doing who knows what instead of being a father. A no-good middle-aged man, huh? From your viewpoint, it doesn't come as a surprise that you would see him in that fashion. Huh? Never mind. Let's hurry and head home. We should let Dad know that we're qualified as junior bracers. Right. Alright. Let me just talk to her real quick. Congratulations! You two are now official members of the Bracer Guild. From now on, I'm going to be passing out jobs to you like candy. Bring it on is all I have to say. I look forward to working with the Guild. Hi there, Stone and Joshua. Oh, hi, Ridge. Looks like your training is over, isn't it? I'm humbled to know that you two are the youngest ever to pass the Bracer exam. I look forward to working with you in the same capacity. Ourselves as well. I have to get back to work now, but if there's something you don't understand, just give me a holler. So... Oh, there's... <laughs> Hurry up and come on! Wait, wait for me, Luke! Huh? Oh, it's you two. Oh, great. It's Estelle. Hi there, Joshua. Okay, you little twerp. What's with that oh, great, it's Estelle remark? And what's the big hurry? How about telling us where you're headed? You're not thinking about wandering out of town alone, are you? The roads are full of monsters, I hope you know. You're such a pest, Estelle. Don't you know there's no room for girls to be sticking their big fat noses in boys' business? Quit acting like you're a bracer, you wannabe. Tsk, tsk. How wrong you are, Luke. How incredibly wrong. You're more wrong than a fool who thinks there's better tasting milk in Liberal than the milk that comes from Parasol Farm. But what? No way. You're full of it, Estelle. In fact, just in a few minutes ago, we're qualified to become real bracers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Real bracers. More like bracers in training, really. Don't think you should be getting on your high horse just yet, Estelle. Now a high pony, on the other hand. Quit being a killjoy. Wow, you two are great. I'm so happy for the both of you. Oh, Pat, you're such a good little boy. Unlike that smart aleck and cynical brat you call a friend. This is a fair. I was supposed to become a bracer first. I can accept that Joshua came a bracer before me, but getting passed by the likes of Estelle? <laughs> What's the likes of Estelle supposed to mean? Just so you know, you can't be in a bracer until you're 16 years old. Get it? Only mature people allowed? And that means no little kids who are still going to Sunday school. I don't know how I should put this, Estelle, but Sunday school is dying to have you back. You better watch out, Estelle. I'm going to go train at my secret base, and before you know it, I'm going to be a bracer, too. 
Come on, Pat, let's go. Oh, all right, I'm coming. See you later, Estelle. Bye, Joshua. That boy, Luke, he's always trying to pick a fight with me. I wonder if he just plain hates me or something. Rather, I think it's the exact opposite. What do you mean by that? Don't worry about it. It's just a boy thing. At any rate, what do you think Luke meant when he said secret base? I don't know why, but it somehow makes me a bit curious. I know exactly what you mean. A secret base sounds really intriguing. The pure heart of a young child can be so inspiring at times. That's not really what I meant by curious. So while the first episode has been really just doing a lot of tutorial and foundation building for the rest of the game, I hope that you guys enjoyed it anyways. The characters are pretty interesting and I really look forward to beating this game. I'd love to see some comments in the comment section and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of Let's Plays. It's more than just this, I swear.